Good morning, good morning. It is Thursday morning, y'all. Look, I am here this morning, a little bit behind. I know. Uh, listen, I couldn't get my light going this morning. Uh, you know, you check it the night before, and it looks great. <laughs> but then uh, you get up, and you're ready, and the light is not the same. So, hey, we do the best I can with we with what we have and um listen you know technology is just technology it's great you know but sometimes you you know you're just going to have issues good morning to everybody welcome basma i see you my sister sister um uh, i'm so happy you hear you and why me and and everybody else who have have not logged on yet and those who uh, will be watching at a later time. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Real Talk Inspiration. I'm Valerie Oliver, founding pastor of First Liberty Baptist Church of Baton Rouge, Louisiana. There is a Baptist church in Baton Rouge, Louisiana that is all inclusive. We are the place where love fulfills the law. Not rules, not laws, not judgment, not criticism, love. Amen. And so all are welcome. Uh, your gender expressions, your gender affections, uh, where you're from, you know, who you love, who you marry, none of that matters to us because it doesn't matter to God. God is only concerned about our hearts. Amen. So y'all, I want you to know you are welcome here in this place anytime. All right. So listen, we're going to go on uh, and uh, we're going to pray. You know, I used to hear the elders in the traditional church say, if there ever was a time we needed the Lord, we need him now. And so we need to pray. If you have anything on your heart, anything that burdens you, anything that is weighing heavily upon you, it's time to get rid of it and cast it upon the Lord. Jesus said, cast all of your burdens upon me, for I care for you. And so, beloved, let's give it all to the Lord. Chuck, I see you, brother. Good morning. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So y'all listen, there is no need in carrying these burdens. Now I used to hear the same elders say they are dear to my heart, y'all. You know, um, many of them are gone on home now, but um, I used to hear them also say, uh, if, if, you know, oh, what needless pains we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. So, beloved, let us carry everything to God now. Let us give everything to God in prayer. We may not be able to say it all right here, right now. But God knows what's in our hearts. So while I'm praying, you be praying at the same time. Don't you know God is big enough? powerful enough to hear all of our prayers at the same time as if you were the only one praying. Isn't that awesome? So y'all, come on with me now to the throne of grace and let us make our request made known unto God. Dear God, we thank you this morning. Thank you that you have allowed us to see a brand new day. You didn't have to wake us up this morning. You didn't have to allow us to lie down and rest last night and slumber in the very image of death and, and, and watch over us last night and keep us safe the whole night through as we never even knew we were still in the world. But you were watching over us and you were like peeping in like a parent would peep in on a child to make sure everything is all right. Oh, what a blessing. Thank you, Lord, for 
keeping us and watching over us and, and, and for protecting us as we slept and you sent your angels and they encamped all around us and all around our dwelling places, Lord, and you, you kept us. And this morning, for some reason, Lord, you didn't have to do it, but you did it anyway. You woke us up. Our eyes came open and behold a brand new day. It is a day we have never seen before and a day we will never see again. Oh, but we will rejoice and be glad in this day. For it is the day you have made. We thank you for it, Lord. It's another opportunity to bless one another. It's another opportunity to uh, praise you. Another opportunity to love you by loving one another. To serve you by serving one another. We thank you. Oh, what a privilege. You don't need us. You don't have to use us, but you give us the opportunity to be used by you. Thank you, Lord, for involving us in your work in this earth. We thank you, Lord. We count it a great joy. We get to get up at 7 o'clock in the morning. We don't have to. It's not a burden. We don't. We don't say, oh, my goodness, it's time to get up. No, we get to get up. Oh, it's a privilege to get up. We get to get up early in the morning and come and have a, a fellowship time with you, to come and speak with you together as one. We get to get up and come together and to praise you and to worship you and to pray and hear your word. We get to get up and spend time with you. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise this morning. We know who you are. You are the one and only true and living God. And besides you, there is none other. We know that you are the creator of the heavens and the earth and the seas and, and the universe and everything there is. We thank you, Lord, for creating us, the apple of your eye. We thank you, Lord. And we know that we have fallen short as good as you have been to us. All of the many blessings you've bestowed upon us, food on our tables and shoes on our feet, clothes on our backs, many of us take that for granted, but there are so many who are less fortunate. But oh God, you have blessed us and you have allowed us to spend time with you and to be here this morning. And as good as you have been to us, Lord, we have fallen short one way or another. All of us have. And so, Lord, we ask your forgiveness this morning. Have mercy, Lord. You keep on giving us chance after chance after chance to continue to be our authentic selves, to be transparent, and to love one another. And so forgive us if we haven't done so. Forgive us if we have said something or done something that has harmed someone, whether we realized it or not. Forgive us, Lord, and make everything all right. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. Fill us so that we can hear you and see you and work in our lives and in the world. Fill us so that we'll be the bright lights that this dark world needs to see. Fill us so, Lord, that we can recognize your voice. Jesus said, my sheep know my voice, and a stranger they will not follow. Thank you, Lord, for letting us be close to you and to speak with you this morning. Thank you for hearing our prayer.
prayers. You are a God who does not only hear our prayers, but you answer. And we thank you, Lord. And now, Lord, we want to lift up those who are heavily burdened and those who may not have so heavy burdens, but yet they are burdened. They are concerns, they are fear, they are worries, they are anxieties all over the world. Somebody's going through something. Everywhere we look, everywhere we turn, something is happening. But Lord, we don't have to worry about it. You told us in your word not to worry about anything, but to pray about everything. And so, Lord, we pray this morning. We pray that you will take these burdens. We pray that, Lord, you will lift them from us because we don't have to carry them because you love us and you care for us. Somebody may have gotten a bad report from the doctor the other day. Somebody left home the doctor's office with their head hanging down, Lord, but you know all about it. You know everything. You know more about us than we know about ourselves, Lord. You already know the plan you have for us. You already know, Lord, what you're going to do in this situation, and we know that you are still the chief physician in the hospital. We already know, Lord, that you are still in the healing business. I've seen it in my life. I've seen it in my family. I've seen it in friends. I've seen it in others. We know that you are still in the healing business. You still heal today. Oh, yes, you do. You might do it in a different way. People are looking for you to just wave your hand and then we're healed or to uh, uh, to just uh, uh, put some mud on somebody's eyes and they see again or or to tell them to go dip in the pool and and they're healed or or, or to just uh, or, or do whatever you say do and, and, and right in front of us and they're healed but you don't do it that way anymore Lord you still can if you want to but we are much more advanced now in medical technology that you have so many new ways. There are some people who need to get that, Lord. They're still holding on to the past and, and the traditions, Lord, and, and you don't even operate that way anymore. Uh, I know, Lord, you have, have moved us forward. You have pushed us into new ways of doing things. You have not changed. Your word has not changed, but your methods the way by which you do your word, the ways you operate in the world have changed. You still heal, but you do it differently. You use the doctors and, and, and natural uh, medications and, 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 and medications that we have developed synthetically. You use it all. You use the nurses and the technicians and, and therapists and, and teachers and, and specialists and, and, and psychiatrists. You use all of us, Lord, in ways that you never did before. Oh, Lord, we thank you that you still heal today. You use all of us, even those who are not in the hospitals, those who work even outside on the streets. They're helping, Lord, because you can hit a pothole and have a flat and, spin, and, and mess up your car and somebody else's, and somebody can get hurt. Everybody has a purpose. I don't care what it is. You're using all of us to help us and to move us forward and to heal our land. Somebody needs to see that this morning. 
You do it, Lord, still, but you do it in a different way, in different ways. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. You've moved us forward. Lord, there might be somebody with some other issue. I don't know all about it, Lord, but you do. All of the hairs on our heads are numbered. When we combed our hair and brushed our hair this morning, you know how many hairs fell out. You know how many of them are gray. We might put a little dye on them, Lord, but you know how many are really gray. You know everything about us. That's how much attention you give to us. We thank you, Lord, that you pay close attention. Like parents and grandparents who examine their children and they notice every little thing. We thank you, Lord, that you are our parent. We thank you for being our mother and our father. We thank you for being our grandmother and our grandfather. We thank you, Lord, for being with us and caring for us. We cast all of these burdens upon you now, Lord. It could be finances, it could be a relationship, it could be a job problem, it could be no job, it could be uh, somebody who's been looking for a job for months now and still hasn't found employment. Open doors for them, Lord. Open doors, give them peace in their hearts, Lord. Those who might have a job and hate it, we ask, Lord, that you would give them peace. If somebody's bothering them on the job, if a supervisor or a manager doesn't like them, Lord, and they're picking on them and finding ways to come against them and trying to make their lives miserable, Lord, I pray that you would give them peace, that you would just fix that situation, get in the middle of it, Lord, and fix it. Any kind of family issue or whatever might be going on, Lord. Help us, Lord. Whatever the issue may be, whatever the problem may be, we know you're able. Our communities, our cities, our towns, our state, our country, the world. We all need you, Lord. And so we ask that you would intervene in all of our affairs. Give us justice. Give us equality. Give us all peace together as one. And Lord, we'll give you all the praise. Lord, before we say amen today, we will not forget those who are grieving this morning. Oh, there are so many grieving the loss of loved ones. Lord, we ask that you would give peace that passes all understanding. We ask, Lord, that you would lift up bowed down heads. Let them know that their loved ones are in a place that they can't even imagine. So colorful and beautiful. All kinds of interactions going on that we never knew could even be possible. Oh Lord, I don't have the words to describe. Eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard of the things you have for us in, uh, uh, in store for us. So we thank you for that wonderful place where they are. And Lord, we ask you to give us peace, give us strength, give comfort as only you can. And Lord, we'll always give you the praise, the honor, and the 
for we realize there is no one like you. And there's no one who can meet our needs like you can. And now as we approach your word, let us approach it with open hearts and spiritual ears to hear what it is you have to say to us today. To all of these, your people, who are with us live right now and those who will be with us later at a t another time. Thank you, Lord. Speak now, Lord. Teach through me. And Lord, we know that if you speak, if you teach, we know we have heard it straight from heaven. We thank you now. It is in the name of Jesus the Christ we pray. Amen. Amen, beloved. Know that God not only hears our prayers, but God also answers our prayers. Amen? You do know that, right? I just have to remind you every single chance I get that God answers our prayers. Beloved, you know, as we know, there's always something going on, and there's always much to pray about. And so this morning, the Lord, you know, pressed upon my heart to think about um, how we have been divided in this country, how racism and hatred and homophobia and transphobia, you know, uh, have separated us, you know, uh, even within the same communities and uh, within the same nationalities, you have the men against the women and the women against the men and the older against the younger, the younger against the older and the light-skinned the, the black people against the dark-skinned black people and the dark-skinned black people against the light-skinned black people. That sounds familiar to you. Uh, you, you remember Willie Lynch, uh, who wrote the letter on, on how to make a slave. All you got to do is turn them against one another. That's how you stay, you, you stay in control of them. That's how you keep them sub, subdued. That's how you keep control over them. You divide them among themselves. You separate them among themselves. You, you cause them to dislike one another. You, you, you cause them to find prejudices and, and dislikes among themselves and, and keep them divided and then you conquer. Uh -huh. Teaching the slave trader how to keep slaves under their control. Some of us haven't gotten away from that Willie Lynch concept. There are some who still live by that. You'll see, you'll see some who still are, 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 want to separate the men from the women and, and, and want to declare superiority, especially the men, over the women. Mm -hmm. I keep a woman in her place and, and the men go out and work and let the women stay home and have babies that's all they're good for that's all they're supposed to be doing they're not supposed to be out in the corporate world we're the men we're the heads of the household we're, let me tell you something men if you don't make uh, 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 money uh, in the household you're not the head of the house whoever makes the money that pays all the bills is the head of the house I just thought I'd just throw that in there right now, you know. So it ain't got nothing to do with your sex, uh, if you're a man or a woman. It's how, it's whether you can pay the bills or not. You see, and, and we were kept from being able to pay the bills. You see, because we were restricted, and there was only so much we were allowed to do as women. There was a time we couldn't even vote. Only white men could vote. Mm -hmm. And if some would have their way today, uh, they would take us on backwards. I see you, Candace. I see you. Good morning, sister. God bless you. Welcome. Welcome. And so, uh, uh, yes, 
you see. And so we have been divided. There are those who would take us backwards if they could. Oh, but they can't take us backwards. We are not going backwards. We are continuing to move forward. We will move forward. I don't care what they do, what they try to do, all of their strategies, their scheming and plotting. We are not going backwards. We will continue to move forward because God is pushing us forward. God has already set this thing in motion. When they come up with all these crazy laws and all this legislation to try to keep us down and to hold us back, they don't realize they are fighting against Almighty God. They think they're fighting against black and brown people. They think they're fighting against the LGBTQ plus community. They think they're fighting against women. No, they're fighting against God. And so, beloved, they'll wake up one day and realize that they're fighting a losing battle. Mm -hmm. I know I'm right. Am I right about it? I, I, know I, I know I'm right. So there is division in this country in particular, uh, not to mention other, other parts of the world. But right here at home, there is domestic terrorism. Uh -huh. There was a time when we only needed to be concerned about foreign terrorism. People coming from other nations to terrorize us, to bomb our buildings and, and, and plow into our buildings with airplanes. But now, beloved, there are more domestic terrorists than there are foreign terrorists. What has prompted that? What has caused the growth of domestic terrorism right here in our own country? What has turned some against another? See, uh, how, well, we're going to talk about that a little bit today, beloved. Uh, see, we've been divided. Uh, we've been separated by all of these phobias, transphobia, and homophobia, and, and people who uh, want to keep us apart from, we, from one another. You see, do you know that, that, that Sunday mornings at 11 o'clock is considered the most segregated time of the week? The 11 o'clock hour, especially it's getting better now. You see, you know, there's always something we need to see in what God allows to happen. Now, beloved, you see, when God stopped everything with COVID and set everybody down and said, everybody sit down and be still now. You see, then God started showing us different ways of doing things. Now we're virtual. Many are not going back to church in person. We're going, we're going forward to church. We're going forward. We're moving into a new building. You'll hear about it. I'll keep you posted. It'll be a few months from now, but, but we'll be going uh, to forward a, a, a new building, uh, beloved. Uh, uh, but, but, you know, prior to, you know, uh, uh, the pandemic, uh, we were sitting together around those who, who look like us, talk like us, smell like us, walk like us. You see, uh-huh, you have the white church, the black church, the Asian church, the Hispanic church. You got all of these different churches and, 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 and you got one ethnicity, one ethnic group at that church. The most segregated hour of the week is Sunday morning at 11 o'clock. That's statistics. Uh-huh. That's facts. I'm telling you, you can go and look it up. But, beloved, uh, it is slowly changing. Even though right now it's changing virtually, uh, when we do move forward, uh, it's not going to be the same. When we go forward to the building, uh-huh, when we take the church to the building, it's going to be different. It's going to be different. Some are still sitting up in there with that same old, same people and the same four, us four and no more, and, 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 and not have, haven't changed anything. And so, beloved, God is teaching us something. 
God is teaching us something. And so, beloved, uh, you know, since the murder of George Floyd, I've seen this thing start to move a little quicker. I've seen this thing pick up, you know, uh, uh, the Black Lives Matter, you know, uh, movement. I saw it pick up. I, I, I saw some some intensity in it. I, I saw during the protest, people of all nations and I mean around the world, they, they showed it on TV. They had about six or seven different screens from different nations where people were marching on the street in other nations, not in other states in America, other nations around the world. Uh, how I saw people of all nations and backgrounds and creeds and belief systems. Uh, I saw them all come together for one cause. Justice. Justice for all. And so, beloved, today, the Lord has impressed upon my heart to share with you how long ago God started changing the world and started changing it as we have known it since we have been here. But it started long before we even came into this world. And so, beloved, I want you to come with me to Ephesians. Ephesians, the second chapter, and we'll begin at verse 11. Ephesians chapter 2, and we'll begin at verse 11, and, and I'm reading the NIV. Paul is encouraging the churches in Ephesus. He's, in, he's encouraging them. He's, he's trying to lift them up and, and let them know that, that everything is all right. You see, they have, have, have gone through a few things, especially the Gentiles. The Gentiles were uh, everyone who were, was not a Jew. Everyone who was not a Jew. If you were not a Jew, you were a Gentile. You were an other. You were one of them. You were those people. You were not a Jew. You did not have all the privileges. You know, you, you, you went to church. Yeah, maybe you could come into the church, but you had to sit in the back. You had to go somewhere else. You couldn't sit up there with the Jews. You had to stay in the outer court. Uh -huh. And so Paul is encouraging everybody here in our text, the Jews and the Gentiles alike. Beloved, we would be considered Gentiles today if it had not been for Jesus. If it had not been for the Lord on our side, you would be a Gentile and I would be a Gentile. We would be seen as an other in the sight of many. Now, I'm aware that there are many who still see us as other. But, beloved, we don't need to worry about how people see us. We only need to know that God sees us in a much different way. Let's take a look, beloved. In verse 11, Paul says to the believers at Ephesus, he says, Therefore, remember... Remember, because he's, he's encouraging them. He's letting everybody know, hey, you know, it's going to be all right. You know, the Lord is with us now. The Lord is with us all now. Don't worry about it. I'm just kind of summing up what he said before. And he says, therefore, remember that formerly you who are Gentiles by birth was not born a Jew, not born a, a, a Hebrew an Israelite. Remember, Judaism, a Jew, that's a religion. That's a belief system. Uh, that's not the ethnicity of, uh, of Israel. That is their religion, Jew, uh, Judaism. Uh, their, their ethnicity is Israelite or Hebrew. 
And so he said, therefore, remember that formerly you who are Gentiles by birth and called, see, Paul let them know you were just called that. How many of you know, beloved, it ain't about what you are called. It's what you answer to. It's not what people call you. It's how you see yourself that matters. People might call you everything but a child of God, but you don't worry about what people call you. It's what you answer to. Remember that, beloved. I just wanted to remind you now of that, see. And so Paul said, you Gentiles, see, uh, by birth, you were called uncircumcised. That was a bad word to them. That was that wasn't nothing nice. That that was that was a word of contempt. You know, that that was something that was not kind at all. You were called uncircumcised because you see the Jews who thought they were all that and that uh, they were the only people who God loved and that, that they were the only people who God wanted in the family of God. They were circumcised. It was a covenant that started with Moses, between Moses and God, and it was, that was a time when it was for the Israelites and, and it was for the Jews, you see. Uh -huh, that, but the, it was for that time. See, it was for back then, in that time. Uh -huh, I'm talking about the Old Testament. I'm, I'm not talking about the, the New Testament. I'm talking about in the Old Testament with Moses. And so they were called uncircumcised. If you were uncircumcised, you didn't belong. And you don't belong with us. We, we're circumcised. You, 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 we, we, we are closer to God than you are. God loves us more than God loves you. You know, you, 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 you're uncircumcised. You, you, you can't come in here and worship with us. Uh, you, you're not circumcised. We are circumcised, you see. And so they was they were called uncircumcised by those who called themselves the circumcision. That's what they called it, the circumcision. You know, they were, they called themselves the circumcision. You know, they were all that, you see. So, 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 you know. And, and Paul made sure he pointed out that this was a circumcision that was done in the body by human hands. It wasn't by God. It was circumcision done by the human hands. You know, uh huh. And, and, and see, but when God circumcises us, beloved, God circumcises both men and women. Because when God circumcises us, God circumcises the heart. God cleans the heart. God cleanses us from the inside out. That's God's circumcision. God cleanses us through our hearts, through our our bodies inside and out from the soul on out to the body spiritually no human hands involved and so paul says you were called uncircumcised by those who called themselves you did you catch that they call themselves themselves they call themselves the circumcision didn't come from God. He called themselves the circumcision. By this time, beloved, God had broadened the perspective on, on, on life in the spirit. God had broadened. Now, see, uh, uh, the, the believers are all uh, living under grace, no longer under the law. Circumcision was under the law. And so, beloved, uh, Paul goes on and he says, listen here, verse 12, remember that at that time you were separate, talking to the Gentiles. Everybody who wasn't a Jew, you were separate from Christ. And they were, they, 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 you know, they didn't know Jesus. They didn't, hadn't heard uh, about Jesus, you know. They were from different ethnic groups, and, and, and they didn't know they worshipped, you know, God as they knew God uh, or whatever. They didn't know the Christ. Paul is not criticizing or being judgmental here. They just didn't know the Christ. 
they worshiped in their own way. They worshiped their God that they knew. You know. And so Paul said, remember that at that time you were separate from Christ. And, 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 and they were excluded from the citizenship according to Israel, you see. They were separate from the citizenship in Israel and considered foreigners by the Jews. See, foreigners to the covenants of the promise without hope and without God in the world. See, Jews, you know, they just thought God loved them and only them. And Paul said, but. <laughs> uh, English people, language, but. What is but? What is, what is but? What does but do in a sentence? Uh-huh. You see, I, I, I might not recall uh, the correct terminology, uh, but it changes things. It changes what was just said. You were considered others. Mm -hmm. yeah, you were called uncircumcised. You were uh, excluded from the citizenship. Uh, you were not within the family of God. But, but, but God. He said, but now in Christ Jesus, verse 13, you who were once far away, far away from, from, from God, you see, because Paul is thinking of Jesus and how much closer we can be to God through Jesus. He said, uh, but now in Christ Jesus, see, Jesus is coming to the world. Uh, Jesus had come to the world and, and, and had gone on back to heaven now by this time. And, and Paul said, uh, but now you see, uh, through Jesus, uh, you who were once uh, far away, you have now been brought near by the blood of Christ. So Paul is saying it's not circumcision or uncircumcision. Neither one of them matters. What matters is the blood of Jesus. What matters is the blood of Christ. Uh -huh. uh, uh, have you uh, 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 looked at how Jesus uh, suffered so that we all can be closer to God? And so, beloved, uh, Paul is not criticizing those who had, had worshipped in different ways in times past. He's just letting them know, hey, you really want to get closer to the Lord? Through the blood of Jesus, uh, it is available to you. But now in Christ, but now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ. Far away. Some may not have known even God. Some may not have known the true and living God. Some may not have. Some may have. I don't know. But he's speaking to the ones who were once really far away from God. We can think of some people who are really far away from God who think they know God. Even right now today. And just look at some of the politicians and some of our leaders. You know they don't know God. You look at some of the policies and some of their 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 ways of doing things that affect everybody else and the decisions they make. See, uh huh. And, and, and you know they base their decisions on what their religious beliefs are, and and, and they make policies and and rules that affect other people based on their own personal beliefs. God didn't put them in there to do that. God didn't put them in there to do that. That's another lesson, though. And so, beloved, uh, but 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 through Christ, He's saying, "Listen here, y'all. Now stick with me. Now I, I I I won't be too long." And so, once far away, you've been brought near by the blood of Jesus. Still talking to the Gentiles now, the others, uncircumcised. For he himself is our peace. Notice Paul is saying our peace. He's talking to everybody. Not just the Jews. Because Jews were there. 
Jews were there, but Paul took a moment to just talk to the Gentiles. The Jews were in the midst. They were there. They were present. But he's talking to the Gentiles. And then here in verse 14, he says, our talking to the Jews and the Gentiles alike. He said, for he himself, Jesus, is our word. Lord have mercy. Jesus is our word, peace. Not just uh, one certain group of people. Not just one certain uh, ethnic group, or uh, just one certain uh, 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 skin color, or gender, or sex. Not just one certain. Paul said, "Our word." It was inclusive. It excluded no one. This message Paul had. It didn't exclude anyone. It was an inclusive message. And Paul said, our peace, Jesus is, who has made the two groups. Back then, it was the Jews and the Gentiles. If you wasn't a Jew, then you were a Gentile. It wasn't for two groups. Now, you have all kinds of groups. Beloved, let me remind you that in the beginning, see, some people get stuck in the beginning. They're stuck back there with Adam and Eve, you see. You see, but that was the beginning. If something is the beginning, beloved, that means that there are things to follow. That means that there's going to be an evolving and I, and I see that I'm freezing. I hope that you can still hear me. I see that it's freezing up a bit. I don't know why. I don't know what's going on. I, I, I didn't change anything. But uh, as long as you can hear me, beloved, uh, uh, I hope that it'll be okay. So uh, uh, and let me know if I'm freezing too much, you know. But 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 uh, I'll try to keep up. But I see that 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 something is going on here, and I don't understand what it is. I don't understand what Facebook is doing. Uh, I I might end up doing everything on on YouTube, cause face, I don't believe I have this problem on YouTube. Uh, do I have this problem on YouTube with this freezing up and stuff? Can y'all still hear me? Let me go on, beloved. Listen, for He Himself is our peace. Let me tell you something. In the beginning, beloved, that's the beginning. That means that there's going to be future. There's going to be future things happening. The beginning is only the beginning. You have to start somewhere. In the beginning, beloved, there was only two genders, two sexes and one gender. <laughs> two sexes and one gender. The sexes were male and female. The gender was one gender, and that was heterosexual. But we have evolved. That was the beginning. But see, I know some people don't believe me. I know some people are wondering, what in the world is she talking about? What in the world? Well, let me help you a little bit, try to understand what I'm saying here, beloved. There was one 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 gender heterosexual two sexes male and female and there was one ethnicity one ethnic group now i'm not gonna get into what ethnic group it was because that's another lesson but but beloved uh how many ethnic groups are there now there was one ethnic group the first two humans that God created, that, that was one ethnicity. Now how many are there? Asian, Hispanic, Black, White. How many, beloved, how many ethnic groups? Think about all over the world. How many countries now are in this world? How many nations? How many ethnic groups do we have now? Just like ethnic groups evolve from one to many, the genders have evolved from one to many. 
There is no longer just one gender heterosexual. Some people don't want to get that. Some people don't want to understand that. Some people don't want to accept that. There is more than one gender today. There is no longer just a heterosexual gender. There are many genders today. Bisexual, asexual, lesbian, gay, transsexual, transgender. Oh, there are many today, beloved. Uh-huh. We are many. We, we, we. We, we are many and we are created in God's image. And don't let anybody tell you anything different. We are all created in God's image. We have evolved, beloved. How am I doing? What's going on on the screen here? Am I, am I, am I, still, am I still freezing up? What's, what's happening? Everything all right? I saw somebody else on here. Welcome to you. Welcome. Even if I can't see you, welcome. You're always welcome here. I think I saw Santos. Santos, God bless you. Welcome. Listen here. Selma, that's who I see. Selma, God bless you. Welcome, Selma. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Selma, Selma. God bless you. You're welcome here. Listen, that was the beginning. And people are expecting everything to still be the same way it was in the beginning. Things have changed and we have evolved. See? So, 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 Paul here is talking to these two groups. It was only two groups at that time. Paul was talking to two groups, Jews and the Gentiles. See? Uh-huh. He said, for he himself, Jesus, is our peace, who has made the two groups one. Has made the Gentiles and the Jews one and has destroyed the barrier the barrier the dividing wall of hostility what is the wall hostility hatred transphobia homophobia discrimination racism that's the wall i'm telling you they had a separate place in the church for the gentiles they were divided by a wall. They couldn't come in the presence of God, so they thought, just like the others. See, they had to stay on the outer court, divided by a wall. But Paul said, no, God has made these two groups, and now today, beloved, all of the groups, all of us, one. God has destroyed the barrier. Man still tries to put up a barrier. See, man still tries to put up a barrier and separate us and divide us. But God has destroyed that barrier long ago. Way back when Paul was giving this message, God had destroyed that barrier, that dividing wall of hostility. Yeah, hostility. People are hostile. Hostile towards certain groups of people. You got black folk that just walk up to Asians and just, just go punch them upside the head and assault them. I, I, I'm, I'm telling you, it ain't just other groups. Sometimes it's us. I've seen the black folks just, just walk up to an Asian person walking down the street, just punch them in the face. Just assault them. That's wrong. Not to mention the fact how we assault one another in the street, shooting up one another, killing one another. All the black blood in the street by the hands of our own selves. 
See, black on black harm, black on black killing and murder. And so, beloved, Paul said these groups have become one. And see, man wants to try to keep the barrier, tries to keep the wall, the dividing wall, so that we can stay separate. They want to keep us separate. They don't want to be together with us, one with us. And so by setting aside in his flesh, Paul is talking about what Jesus did and how Jesus broke down the barrier, how Jesus broke down the wall of division by his blood, by his flesh, by, by, by setting aside in his flesh the law with its commands and regulations. His purpose was to create in him one new humanity. Your Bible says that, verse 15. Ephesians, the 11th chapter, verse 15. Did you see that? I mean, I'm not, I see it in my, in my Bible. I don't know if y'all see it. Uh, you, you know, Paul says, Jesus' purpose was to create in himself one One new, new humanity. God is still doing a new thing. I know people don't, God, some people don't want to believe that. God is doing a new thing. He, he started it long ago, and he's still doing a new thing today. Some people are fighting against it. Oh, you got some of them up there in Washington. They fighting against it with all their might. Oh, they fighting against this new humanity, this oneness. They don't want it to be oneness because they want to be the only ones great. They want to be the only ones to prosper. They want to be the only ones to keep the privilege that they've always had. They want to be the ones to, to have all the power. They don't want this oneness, but they can't stop it, beloved, because God has already set it in motion way back 2,000 so years ago, God started this and tore down that wall. So I don't know why they keep trying to put a wall up and divide us. It's not going to work. God is still creating within himself one new humanity out of all of our groups. And there's going to be peace. Now, I'm not saying there's not going to be some other issues going on. I'm not saying that there'll be something going on here, something going on there, that everybody's going to be all, all, all right with one another, you know, but that's all right. It, it won't matter. If they're against us, it'd be such a small number. It won't matter. And Paul goes on. I'm almost too, beloved. And in one body, one, there's that one again, one it's not groups now in the sight of God. It's not separation in the sight of God. It's one, one body to reconcile both of them, both those groups, Jews and Gentiles. Well, that includes all of us because we are considered Gentiles back in that day. That's what we would have been. We would have been called uncircumcised. We would have been called Gentiles, others. And we're still being called others, but it don't matter what they say. It doesn't matter what they call us. God today is still causing us to become one body to reconcile all of us to God through the cross. By which he put to death their hostility. See, the two groups were hostile toward one another. See, the Jews didn't like the Gentiles, and the Gentiles didn't like the Jews because the Jews didn't like them. And y'all can understand what I'm saying. You know, you have a little problem with somebody who don't like you, you know, for no reason, just because of your skin color. 
or just because of who you love, you know. You have a problem. I know I do. You know, if you don't like me just because of my skin color, then I don't like you because you petty. You know, and, 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 and I don't, that don't mean I don't love you now. That doesn't mean I won't do anything I can for, for, for you and to help you. But I ain't going to hang around you and I don't want to be in your company. Because I know you don't like me and you don't do nothing but talk about me behind my back. If I know you don't like me because of who I love or because of who I'm attracted to, I don't like you because you petty. That's petty. I don't need petty people around me. I need real, authentic people around me. A lot of them in the closet anyway, themselves. In the closet and don't like uh, gay people. You see, I'm just being, I'm just telling you, this is real talk. I'm just telling you now. God ain't through with me yet. Uh, yet. You know, I'm just, I'm just telling you how it is. You know, uh, how I feel about it. You know. And so, you know, Jesus has made all of us one. But some people don't want to believe that. Some people don't want to believe that, that we are one. We are not different groups in this group over here in this group. No. They had it right. In, in, in the 20, what was it? The 20, uh, 16 campaign, they had it right. We are better together. That's the way God wants it to be. We are better together. And I really believe that they stole that election. That's why they think we stole the 2020 election. Because, you know, when people do certain things, when you have evil people who do certain things, they think that other people do the same thing they do. You see, they messed up. They did that. They did something to that 2016, I mean, excuse me, that 16, uh, 2016 election. They did. They stole that right out from under uh, our noses. They did that. They stole that. They did. That's why they think the 2020 election was stolen, which was not. It was a legitimate, fair election, and the people spoke. We spoke, and that's that, and it's over. But 2016, they snatched, they snatched that. They did something with help from Russia, with Russia's help. Oh, yes, they did. And so in 2020, they couldn't believe it. They couldn't believe it. They could, just couldn't believe it. They lost. They lost. Oh, yes, it, it, it was fair and square. And by now, they know it. But they got to have something to, 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 to justify their, 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 their evil actions today. So they want to hold on to the fact that they, that, that it was stolen in 2020. So they, they got to justify being evil, you know, and, 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 and being mad, you know, uh, they got to justify. So they want to hold on to the big lie. So anyway, beloved, uh, we're going to go on. We're going to go on. And so, uh, one body, not all these groups anymore. By the blood of Jesus, Jesus put all that separation and division to death. Jesus did away with all that. He came and preached peace to you who were far away and peace to those who were near. Those who thought they were so near, near to God. And preached to those who the, 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 the Jews thought were so far away from God. Jesus came and preached to all of them and is still preaching to all of us today as one. For through him, we both have access to God by one spirit, one spirit, one body that consists of all people. And consequently, as I close the love, Consequently, you are no longer foreigners. You are no longer foreigners and strangers in God's sight. Never was, really. That was only in man's sight. They were foreigners and strangers. But you are no longer foreigners.
foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens of God. Fellow citizens, citizens together, one together with God. You are no longer considered this group, that group, those people, that people. No, we are all fellow citizens with God's people and also members of God's household. So, beloved, don't worry about the people today who still try to keep us separated. Don't worry about the people today, beloved, who still try to keep us apart. Don't worry about the people who still try to put up these uh, divisions and walls of division by their hostilities. You know, uh, 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 our dear beloved sister, uh, Maya Angelou, would say uh, by all these stupidities. trying to keep us divided by all these that, that that wasn't her word I'm not quoting her that that's it's not a phrase she said but uh but the word stupidities I did get from her all these stupidities you see uh 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 trying to divide us see and so Paul says consequently though because of the blood of Jesus you're no longer considered strangers LGBTQ plus community, you are no longer in God's sight, and you never were. And beloved, let me tell you something. This is what I wanted to get to before I close. All of us, black, brown, white, Hispanic, uh, Asian, straight, gay, or you know, however much money you make, how much you don't make, whatever. Wherever you are, beloved, you belong to the Lord in Christ Jesus. Now, I I'm telling you, look, when the Black Lives Matter movement happened and the protests were going on and streets were filled with people uh, in protest of what happened to George Floyd, you didn't just see black people out there. You saw LGBTQ plus people out there. You saw white people. You saw age. Come on, y'all. I don't have to tell you. You saw it with your own eyes. You you watched the news and, and you saw all over the world that there were all these ethnic groups and, and nationalities that were together in solidarity to protest against the injustice and, and the murder of George Floyd. You saw all these groups come together as one beloved right now today when you see protesting against the uh, most recent decision handed down by the supreme court uh, uh banning abortion overturning roe versus wade overturning roe uh beloved you don't just see women out there you see black women, you see men, you see the LGBTQ plus community, you see people of all faiths and all beliefs, Christians, Muslims, Buddhists, you see everybody, you see all groups. God is still bringing us together as one. He might do it in a strange way. She might do it in ways that doesn't make sense, beloved. But God is still bringing us together as one. Something had to happen to bring us together. Something had to happen. Look at what's going on, beloved. Look through your spiritual lenses and see what's going on. We are no longer separate. We are all standing up for freedom, for justice. All of us, all of these groups, you don't just see women who support abortion out there protesting. You see everybody. Woo! You see everybody. And you got people who still want to keep us divided. No, that ain't happening. 
that's over. God set that in motion way back when, as we see in our text today. And it's been in motion ever since. And we now see it manifest more and more and more. We are all one family, beloved, in God. No matter how others try to separate us, we are realizing more and more that we are one and that we are better together. LGBTQ plus community, uh, uh, some of them don't even get pregnant, they ain't worried about getting pregnant, they ain't worried about abortion. But they care about the rights of one another. They care about the rights of humanity. We are one, remember, the, a new humanity. We are all human. Woo! Notice that those who once considered us as others are becoming others. Let me go. I got. Let me. I got to go now. Yeah, yeah. You, you you understand what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? They still trying to hold on to all of that foolishness, beloved. But don't you see now how those who once called us others are are now becoming others? Beloved, that's that's all I want. I I, I that's it. And, and, and it is of their own doing. They the ones did it. They did it to themselves. See, they chose to divide and separate to try to keep themselves on the top. See, white supremacists and you know those who believe in slavery and keeping certain people down. See, see, they chose to do that and it backfired on them. Nobody for that foolishness anymore. Ain't nobody putting up with that. You saw the, 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 the audience walk out, Chuck. You saw the audience walk out at the at the commencement uh ceremony. Uh where was that, Chuck? When they when, when they stuck, got up there, somebody, the speaker got up there talking about abortion, and, and the people walked out. Ain't nobody trying to hear that foolishness anymore. That's over. That's done. You're trying to fix uh, uh, today's problems with your old traditional solutions. They do not work today. We are not going for that. We are one new humanity in Christ. We are one. You know, they want to stay separate. They can stay separate all, all somewhere all by themselves. They want to. <clears throat> Y'all, that's all I wanted to tell you this morning. We don't want. Don't worry about people who want to separate you. Working as one, you saw, yeah, Bassman. The University of Michigan Medical School induction ceremony, Chuck. That's right. And it happened somewhere else, too, out here. But they walked out, got up there talking about abortion. Nobody, uh uh, we ain't, we not. They're going to see. They're going to see. We're we, we, we not doing that. We are one today. We are one. You got those who are fighting against the oneness. But we are all fellow citizens in God's family. Beloved, you remember that. Don't worry about what you hear on the news and what people are saying. We are all God's family. We are one. Our citizenship is with the family of God, no matter who we are. We are one in Christ. The blood of Jesus has set us all free and has torn down the partitions and the walls of division. So, beloved, don't worry about what they're doing or what they're trying to do. They're fighting against God. And that is a losing battle. So, beloved, God bless you this morning. <clears throat>
I'm going to go back and read these compliments. Yeah, they did it to themselves. And it backfired, Basma. They did it to themselves. They sure did. Uh-huh. Amen. Yes, indeed. God bless y'all. You have a wonderful Thursday. God bless you and God keep you is my prayer. Remember, in the sight of God, we are all one. We are not separate. And so, you'll be blessed this morning, beloved. Amen. Be safe and you'll be blessed. Because people are mad about this. They don't want to be one. They don't, they don't want, they don't want to be one. They want to be separate so they can look better than anybody else. It ain't happening. And that that is of God's doing. We don't control the population. We don't control how you see things happening across the whole world. And in and in, in every nation. We don't control that. So if they want to fight against God, let them go right ahead. I'll see you next time. I'll see you Sunday, beloved. 11 o'clock a.m. Central Standard Time over on YouTube. I might do everything on YouTube now. I don't know about Facebook. I'm, 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 getting, I'm kind of getting done with Facebook, you know. I, 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 I have more viewers over there on YouTube, too, you know, because on Facebook, we got too many technical issues going on over here. I saw myself freezing up real bad one time. What y'all think? Y'all leave a comment down there and let me know what you think. If I should do the Thursday morning uh, Real Talk on YouTube as well. Y'all let me know. It's kind of like a little poll. Y'all let me know. You know, who, who, you know, we do a little vote. Let me know if we all stay on Facebook on Thursday morning or on YouTube on, thir on Thursday morning. You let me know. Amen. Cause it don't matter to me, uh, cause uh, I, I, you know, I don't know why it's all this going on. But beloved, I will see you Sunday morning, 11 o'clock a.m. Central Standard Time, um, over on YouTube. Amen. And uh, you'll see a notification come up on our Facebook page, and you tap the picture, and it'll take you right to it. You go over there, beloved, and visit us, First Liberty Church. Visit our channel, subscribe to our channel, and hit the little bell so you can be notified whenever we go live. And so um, uh, I will see you then, beloved. And if you have not yet met this Jesus who have made us one, this Jesus who has made us one in God, one new humanity, and who is telling us we are better together. If you haven't met that Jesus, this Jesus of justice and equality, this Jesus who uh, uh, accepts and affirms the LGBTQ plus community, and this Jesus who is all inclusive, this Jesus who does not separate us, you have not yet met this Jesus. You ought to give him a try. It'll be the best decision you ever made in your entire life. I didn't say give Christianity a try. I said Jesus. Whew. Christianity done, done messed up. They, 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 they done, done stuff. That, I mean, that's, I didn't say try Christianity. I said try Jesus. Jesus will never let you down. Jesus will not forsake you. So, beloved, with that, you let us know now. If you receive Christ, you know, if you ask Jesus, Lord, come on and, and just save me, deliver me, come into my heart and tell me you died for me. You died for me, Lord. I want to believe it. What, what, what really happened? Did you? And if that's true, Lord, I want I want you to, to, to receive me and I receive you and, and, and I want to be one with you because we're better together, all of us. You let us know, beloved, if you do that. And, and we'll pray with you and we'll pray for you. Amen. And we will support you. We are here for you. Any prayer requests, put them in our comments. Email us, uh, inboxes, 
and we will be praying for you. Amen. God bless y'all. And uh, we want to keep, uh, before we go, one more thing. We want to keep uh, Apostle Dawson and uh, uh, that family in prayer. Um, and, you know, he lost uh, his, his mother. She transitioned. I'm not going to say they lost their mother. Uh, but uh, she transitioned. And uh, we want to keep uh, Jackson, Slack, Oliver families, uh, Pastor Marvetta Walker and her family uh, who lost uh, her sister, whose sister transitioned, uh, not going to say lost, transitioned uh, last week. And so we want to keep uh, our earlier, uh, yeah, last week, I believe, uh, and uh, we want to keep them in our prayers today. Amen. And the Smith family, Keith, Roxy, you know, Chad, uh, and everybody you know. Want to lift them up, keep them in, in your prayers tonight. Amen. God bless you, and I'll see you Sunday, 11 o'clock a.m. Central Standard Time on YouTube. We love you here at First Liberty Church. This is the place where love fulfills the law and where we're all fellow citizens.